Uh, well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? Yes, I am too. I'm trying to think of the right time to do this. Um, and, and if these are too, if these are too high for everybody, if these are hard to understand, I, I, I grasp that. This is from a book called Thanksgiving Jokes and Riddles for Smart Kids. And so I think the age recommendation was up to, oh, yeah, five to seven and seven to nine. So if they're above our understanding, maybe you can have, you know, somebody explain it to you. Um, what are turkeys thankful for? Vegans. What do you call a turkey on Black Friday? Lucky. Leftovers. Leftovers. <laughs> what do you get when a turkey lays an egg on top of a barn? An egg roll. Dad went into a rage when he got the shorter end of the wishbone. He just snapped. What do you call a speeding turkey? Fast food. This book's got 300 of these in it. I can bring it up on my phone if I need to. Yeah, Janet found this, so you can, you can blame her. Um, oh. Well, I actually it, good. What are they thankful for, vegans? And the pumpkin jokes were just horrid. Well, let's start off with a, with a word of prayer. Lord, we just thank you for our time together this morning. We thank you that you've called us here. Lord, we just pray that you're, and we know that, you're, that your spirit is here, Father. We acknowledge, we acknowledge that. We acknowledge your presence. Father, I just pray that you would touch hearts and that you would touch minds. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, the announcement that I have is we have charge conference today at 1.30. Um, it's going to have to be up here. I was going to try to do it downstairs as we could spread out and have tables, except we discovered on Wednesday evening that we only have one of three heat units that are working down in the fellowship hall. And so that's not sufficient to get it up over about outside temperature. So uh, we're going to meet up here. Uh, there might be a video that's supposed to be shown. I don't remember. But that's at 1.30 this afternoon. Jerry Wallace from First Church is going to be the elder officiating. We're anticipating it only, it's, it's going to take a very short period of time. Cross Plains did theirs in 10 minutes. Because it's basically the congregation, you know, affirming what the council did on Wednesday night is approving the budget, approving other things. And it's also a method of communication. Um, Janet's pointing out we have Advent devotional books in the back on the table. Uh, what we're suggesting is if you're a family, take one and then members of the family maybe do the devotion together. Ah, oh, what a concept. <laughs> that husbands and wives sit down and do a devotion together. Isn't that radical? I guess we got to do it, huh? But anyway, if, that's, if you can take one, that would be great. Um, we've got... We've got plenty, and I bet Amazon will deliver more if we need it. But I'm actually trying to get it to you before the first Sunday in Advent, which is next Sunday. Which is a great segue to the fact that Janet and I might not be here. No applause. And Stephen has agreed to cover. So there will be applause after that. But, uh, so anyway, we, still, we may be here, but rather than being in a panic on Saturday... Let's go ahead and, and make it so it, it'll be smooth. So Stephen will be here next week. Uh, the other announcement, if you haven't figured out, there's an angel tree in the front of the church. I don't know if everybody noticed it or not, but that's what that is. Now, it is a single family that we have adopted. And on that tree are ornaments with, with the individual in the family, their age, and what they would like to have. And if you look at some of them, it's things like, I'd like a coat. That just makes me get real quiet. Because I remember being a kid at Christmas and getting coats. 
when I really wanted a truck. So take these. I, we'd really like this tree to be empty because I don't want to have to pick them off the tree and come find you at your house. Not that that's a threat. And with a flamingo planted in your front yard at the same time. So anyway, no, please, take, take the ornaments. Let's strip this thing bare and let's get, let's get this family covered. Um, are you giving me a... I just those gifts need to be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They need to be back, ready to be given. Wrapped or in a bag on the first Sunday in December. And just to remind everybody, you know, this is one of these things you go, why are you even reminding us of this? Make sure you put the name of who it goes to on the package. Because we've all run these things before. You have these packages show up and people have neglected to put who they were buying for. So please do that. It just makes the administration a little bit easier and you know, people don't get excited. So anyway, that's for that. Um, the devotions in the back. Anybody else? Didn't you have, uh, somebody say something about putting food? Oh yeah, we've got, well Janet was just telling me, we have a box that won't fit through the door back here for the food drive, but we're putting food in that box mm -hmm. and it's for the same family? No. No, it's a different, no. that's right, it's a different it's family. A different different situation but there's a food drive box here in the back um, it's just down the hall you don't have to go all the way down the hill to do it so anything else well our scripture for today is Matthew 25 40 say and the king will answer them truly I say to you as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it for me. Let's for, oh, David isn't here. David called me on Friday, which I'm glad it's before Saturday. Uh, he wasn't feeling well and had a COVID test and not sure what the result is. So he just said, I don't feel comfortable coming. And I said, thank you very much. So that's why David's not here. So, no, he hasn't quit. He has to know, but he, you know, he wasn't feeling well, so he's waiting the results of this test, and I haven't heard, or I tried to contact him, but had not heard it. Anyway, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Our call to worship this morning, which I'll just read to try to stick with the guidelines, is, from, is Psalms 100. It says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him, bless His name. For the Lord is good, His steadfast love endures forever, and His faithfulness to all generations. Prayer requests this morning, our praise notes. What we got going on? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm sorry, who was it? Danny Moore. Danny Moore. Recovering from COVID. Yes, ma'am. Downey surgery Anybody else? We have an update for that friend of ours, that, that pastor in Florida, Gary Uplager. Uh, Jan had a picture that his wife posted of him standing on the beach. Uh, that's a pretty amazing two weeks to have a lung transplant and to be standing on the beach two weeks later. Isn't God great? Yes, ma'am. I don't have any further details of what was in the email, but Carolyn Goosetree is in rehab, but she, I think this week, was going to move to another facility. 
which may be just a step down. Um, so she's getting better. It's just taking a while. So just keep praying for her. And as soon as I get information about an address, I will pass it on. Yes, sir. Uh, friend Dale Groves is having a uh, cataract surgery this week. Groves? Groves, G R O V E S. That's what I heard, and that's amazing. I've got this mask. Well, also, you know, I have the hearing of a rock. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, I don't, well, it's on the it's on the Facebook page, so I guess it's a public announcement. I, I was trying to show up for some training yesterday that was going to take place at Epiphany Baptist. They're closed for two weeks. Um, they had somebody apparently in the congregation test positive. So that really puts things upside down. I don't know what that means either. Um, anyone else? All right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Well, Lord, we just thank you that you are the God that made the heavens and the earth, Lord. We just thank you that you are in control. You know what's happening. And Father, what you expect from us is to rely on you and to trust you. That you're going to do what you're famous for, as we just heard. You are there. And so, Lord, just like we say every week, just like we talk, you as a, as a father have said that a good father gives his children what they need. And so, Lord, this morning we just, we lift up Danny Moore who's recovering from COVID. Just pray that you would touch him, that you would continue his recovery, <clears throat> protect family members or those that are around him, or to bring him to a wholeness and a healing, Father, we just thank you for that. Lord, we, we lift up um, Donnie having surgery. <clears throat> Lord, pray that you would, you would be with him, that you would touch him. Lord, be with Diane. And Lord, just pray that um, wouldn't it be cool tomorrow morning if they, even if they, after they open him up, they do a, that the, the scope goes, hey, there's nothing here to fix. It's all been healed. Lord, what a prayer, what a praise note. And Lord, we know that you will heal either with the surgeon's hands or with your hand. So Father, we just pray for that healing and for that touch. Lord, we pray for Dale Groves. Uh, Lord, pray that you be with him. Lord, we're thankful that Carolyn is moving out of rehab. We think it's a step down from that. So Lord, we just pray continued strengthening for her. And that, Lord, we just thank you that she's improving. And, Lord, we thank you for the praise note for Gary. Lord, that he's out and about. And, Lord, that he is, he is in recovery. So, Lord, we just thank you. We praise you. We know that, that you're in control. And, Lord, you love us so much that not only will you, will you take care of our issues, but, Father, you, you also gave us a prayer that we can pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Well, this is a continuation of Matthew chapter 25. And just to give you a warning, this gets into the sheep and goats passage. Of course, if we bring up sheep and goats, you know we've got to tell stories. Now, we showed this picture three and a half years ago. Um, when, we, in, when we were in Morocco in 2017, we didn't have a car, but when we went to go to the city where we used to live, we would rent one. And that's a whole other story. I've never had a demolition derby rental car before. But that's exactly what it looked like. It was a bad NASCAR finish. 
In fact, I took it to a body shop friend of mine when we got to Fez and they screwed the front bumper back on. So, high tech. But we're driving down the road almost up to 75 mile an hour speed and the passenger in the car, my lovely wife, screams, goats. And we stopped and looked and there were goats in, and I'm gonna pronounce it, argon, argon oil, an argon tree. And see, what the goats do is they eat the nuts in the tree and then it passes through the goat and then they take the pre-processed nuts and process it further to extract the oil. We've been assured they don't use that in cooking, which means they use it in cosmetics. Merry Christmas. <laughs> now, what the goat herders will do is when they see tourists, they will drive them up into the trees. This isn't the picture from our house. We, when we had a house in, in a neighborhood out in um, northwest corner of Fez, there was a goat herder who had a herd of goats and sheep just like that in the park. And so you see them everywhere. You see goats and sheep together. Well, this passage of scripture um, talks about talks about goats. Oh, I've got something in my notes I didn't know about until I researched it. You know, we we criticize maybe when we think it's kind of silly about pre-processed oil or argon, argon that has gone through a goat. I didn't know the name of it. Do you guys know what Kopi Luwak coffee is? Kopi Luwak coffee, I found it on eBay, $99 for three and a half ounces. It has been pre-processed through the digestive tract of a Asian palm civet. It's a weasel looking animal. This coffee sells for $99, for $425 a pound. Must be good. Why? Why? Do you know where this has been? Why would you buy it? Just prove positive that we are two, five generations away from running away from tigers if we can have that as an important staple that I'm going to go have an $80 cup of coffee. If I get an $80 cup of coffee, somebody better even drink it for me because I don't want to hurt myself. I mean, anyway. Well, what we've talked about before out of Matthew 25, a couple of weeks ago we talked about the cry at midnight about that the bridegroom was coming back with a shout and that we talked on that week about being prepared we talked about being prepared to pray being prepared to bless we talked about generosity being prepared to forgive being prepared to love and the next week we talked about enter into the joy and that was in this the continuation where the master gave the servants money and the top two did something with it and doubled it, but the bottom one just buried it. And but the the the, the phrase in the first two passages was enter into the joy of your master. Because we because they were good stewards with what the master had given us. And we talked about being good stewards of the things we need to be prepared for. Good stewards of the opportunities to pray. I, I have to share this with somebody from the L3 watches it. Um, I don't think the, uh, I had an L3 meeting this, this week, which is pastors around Springfield, and they did prayer requests. And so nobody, you know, you wouldn't think a work room full of pastors, even though it was on Zoom, would not pray. So after about five seconds, I said, sure, I'll pray. They're never going to have me pray again. Because I prayed for them exactly like I pray on Sunday morning. Every prayer request I mentioned by name, it did not last 15 seconds. Because if we're given an opportunity to pray, we need to pray, right? So, that's enter into the joy. Well, we're going to go to the next step. In Christ's glory. So here's, the, here's, here's from the Word. It's from Matthew 25, 31 through 46. It says, When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, that he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people from one another, 
as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he'll place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then will, the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you drink? And when do we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when do we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer him, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on the left, and this is a really nice statement, Depart from me, you cursed, into the evil fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you did not welcome me in. Naked, you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to, to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Well, how do we usually interpret this passage of Scripture? We usually interpret this passage of Scripture and we look at it, and, and, and to be honest, we kind of look at it like, oh, here's some things I need to add to my checklist to make sure I'm a good little boy and girl. To make sure I'm a good Christian little boy and girl, what do I need to do? Okay, I need to feed the poor. I need to be hospitable. You know, I need to, and you can go down the list. We need to clothe people. We need to take care of sick people. We need to do all those things and we check it down. And so... When you look at this passage of Scripture, some people interpret saying, see, being a Christian, you have to do certain things. But we have other places where doing the right thing wasn't enough. See, Paul was asked, if, do I need to do the right thing question in, the chat in Acts? Okay, let's, let's take Matthew and we're going to set that right here. If you go into Acts chapter 16, that's where Paul and Silas are in prison. Right? Know that story. He's in prison. And what happens? They're praying and an earthquake shows up. And all the, I don't know if the walls fall open, the doors fall open. Yeah, the doors open and everybody, everybody's bonds were, were loosed. And the jailer came running out, ready to fall on his sword. And Paul says, don't hurt yourself. We're all still here. And what does it now? I come from an evangelical background. Okay? We take this particular passage of Scripture, and I don't think we interpret the word correctly. Because what the jailer says is, sir, what must I do to be saved? Now, see, what Paul does is Paul takes that question, and he turns it into a spiritual discussion. But let me ask you a question. If you were that jailer and you were responsible for every person in that prison, an earthquake had just hit, the doors had fallen open, the prisoners are able to escape and should have under normal circumstances, I wouldn't be concerned about my soul. I'd be concerned about, can you save me from this situation I'm in because they're going to come kill me. The jailer's question may have been a physical salvation. Paul answered it with a spiritual answer. Because ultimately, that's where we need to go. So, we're, he was looking for something to do, and Paul gave him a spiritual viewpoint. Jesus was also asked the what do I do question by the rich young ruler in Matthew 19. Remember that? The rich young ruler says, what do I need to do to have eternal life? And Jesus said, wait a minute. And so there was a list. He goes, yeah, I've done all those things. And then Jesus said, what? Take all you have and sell it and give it to the poor. Change your perspective. And what did the rich young ruler do? He backed up his tent and wandered off. 
You see, we need to have a perception change. We have a physical salvation that maybe we need a, we need a spiritual thing too. One of my favorite passages of Scripture, and I got a lot of them, and you only find this word translated this way in the New American Standard, and I preached on this a couple years ago, but it was, it was the angel's speech in the prophecy about John the Baptist. And he says in Luke 117, it says, it is, he who, and he's, it is he, which is John the Baptist, who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. That's where he's talking about Jesus. And the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous. And we spent a lot of time talking about that, but if to turn disobedience, you turn it to what? To obedience. So obedience is an attitude of the righteous. It's an attitude. It's a reflex. It's something that we do. Because notice, if you go back, well, Peter, it, it brought up in Leviticus, and Peter brings it up. He says, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passage of your former ignorance, but he who has called you is holy. You also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. You know, all of us in this room are old enough, maybe, to have heard sermons about being holy in a Methodist church. I can tell you who preached them. His name was John Brackman. And he lit the place on fire when he did it. That pulpit was burning. But see, that's something we don't want to talk about. Because what God says is it's not things that you do, it's what you are. You need to be holy. Well, how does that apply? I mean, how does that work? I was reading this thing this week and doing prep. There's a difference between getting slapped in the head and having a gut punch. If you get slapped in the head, you kind of go, oh. But a gut punch, at least for me, kind of knocks the wind out. And I realize I haven't even had a grasp of this before. And one of the comments that I, re that I read about that passage in Matthew that we read is the sheep didn't have any idea they were supposed to do those things. They just did it. It wasn't a checklist. It was an extension of the Holy Spirit in their hearts and the, and the response to the grace that was there. It was a natural response. Now, I've made improvements. Janet will say, no, you haven't. She's not allowed to talk to anybody after church. <laughs> But I'm really trying to do a better job of when someone says something of really spending a couple of seconds to try to make sure I give a good response instead of my knee-jerk reaction that I want to do, which may rhyme with ripping someone's lungs out. <laughs> so, but we will stop, right? And we're learning to do that. We learn to do that. But see... Wesley talked about human perfection. And that if the Holy Spirit is in my heart, if the Holy Spirit is in my life, if I have surrendered to Christ and, and continue to surrender, there shouldn't need to be that three-second radio pause. You know, if you tell them to a talk show, you're on three-second delay. There doesn't need to be that three-second delay because the response coming out of my mouth is going to be the response that God would expect me to give. The closer I get to Him, the less delay I need. And that's what I want. I don't want that three-second delay anymore. I want to walk so close to Him that what comes out every time is what a sheep would say. What I do every time is what a sheep would do. The other part is the goats didn't realize they were doing anything wrong. 
they were just tooling along. They were showing up, doing their thing. But that's not being a sheep. Yeah, we're going to get done early. Because there's no reason to beat on this. But what I did right, which I don't know when I did this because it almost sounds good. Oh. I don't have to wait to have the right response. My verbal response, I like the way it's said, my verbal response can reflect the whole innocence of inside me. My physical response can reflect that. How I treat people, how I am generous to people, how I do things reflects the holiness. It's not, oh, here's a beggar, I need to make sure I get some money out because that's one of the things I can check off my list is being generous. That needs to be an extension of who we are in walking with the Lord. Holiness is not an option. That's also another sermon from way long ago. It's not an option. We are called to be holy. Well, how do I get there? Michael, I'm going to pick on you. Okay, Michael, you say something that ticks me off. You probably don't have to think real hard. Right now? No, no, you can wait. You can do it later. <laughs> you don't need to show off. You don't need to pull D's list out and read it to me. I need to get to the point that whatever you say to me, my response is what Jesus would respond, how Jesus would respond. Isn't that how we need to be living? And it's not, okay, I need, to, I need to stuff that down because what I really want to do is go poke an ice pick in the tires in his truck with what he just said. Okay, I don't want to do that. What's the Christian way to respond? That shouldn't even be in the transaction. What it should be is, thank you for bringing that up. I'll go take a look at that and really let me sit down with the Lord and see what I need to do to address that. And I'm pretending Mike comes up and says, you know, you do this, and I heard you say that to that person and whatever, whatever, which just follow me around. You can come up with a list. By the way, I had to apologize to somebody this week. I went in guns blazing. and I was, I was kidding, but I realized I stepped over the line, so I bought up a dozen donuts the next day. I guess, I guess that solved it. But... But I don't need to have to go back to apologize. Everything that comes out of my mouth needs to be from the Lord. And so that's my encouragement for everybody this morning. That's really where I want us to be. Where whatever we do, whatever we think, whatever we say, it comes from the Lord. It almost sounds like from the Bible. That's where we need to be. And if we are, it not only transforms us, it transforms here. And yes, we're not having contact with people around us, but we do have some contact. It would transform the families we talk to on the phone. So here's what I'd like us to do. Oh, no. Here we go. See, and I will tell you this right now. In my notes, it says final thoughts. And there aren't any. <laughs> So here's what I want us to do. I want us to pay attention this next week to things that we might want to work with, the things that we have. So we need to surrender deeper to the Lord to get closer, to get rid of that delay. Things we need to surrender to say my response needs to be better. Because it's not a matter of doing anything, it's a matter of giving something to God. So, be paying attention this next week. If you happen to find something, I'm not going to ask you to stand up in church. But if you happen to come up with something, you can come up next week and yeah, it'll be closer than six feet, but you can whisper in my ear. Saying, guess what God revealed to me this week? And hopefully, it will be something. God has rescued us from the sin that, that controls us, the sin that binds us. And God can rescue us from me being in the way constantly reflecting Him in the world around. Lord, we just thank You. Lord, we praise You. We glorify You. I thank You for every saint that's present in this room. And that includes everybody. 
Lord, you have called us to walk closer with you. Lord, Holy Spirit, touch us, guide us, and fill us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. We can't really go out the normal way we go because there's ornaments on this angel tree that needs to go. Because again, you don't want me showing up in your front yard with a pink flamingo dropping them off. So, y'all are dismissed. There's also the Advent devotions in the back. Do it one per family. You know, if you're here as a couple, and maybe, you know, you're actually doing something together. What an odd idea. You guys are a blessing. Go get them. <laughs>